So we're starting on our backs today. Legs are going to be long. And as we get things rolling for you, we're going to do a little bit of breath over. Right now, just kind of find the natural cadence of your breath, but just slow it down a little bit. We're not going to counter anything. We're just going to slow things down. Elongate our inhale, elongate our exhale. And we're exhale. Just letting the oxygen just kind of fall out of your nose. Right hand on your heart, left hand on your belly. And we'll concentrate on the natural kind of rise and fall of our left palm. So we want to work on our diaphragmatic breathing, aka breathing through our diaphragm. So you want to fill your belly up almost like you're pouring water into a, a beaker. So it's obviously going to fill bottom up, and that's how we kind of want to fill up our, our torso when we're breathing is bottom up. So kind of filling from the navel area. And then just feel that natural rise and fall. So we're going to do a couple rounds of three second inhale, three, uh, six second exhale, so that one to two ratio in terms of our inhale and exhale. And we're going to breathe through our nose right here. So it'll be a lot of breath in, it'll be that quiet kind of just falling out of the air as we exhale. Three second inhale, six second exhale, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, three seconds. Exhale. Three second inhale. Exhale, six. Inhale, three seconds. Exhale. One more round. Inhale. Exhale. Bring your heels to the ground. So feet are planted on the ground. And just be gentle. We'll do some windshield wipers. So we're just letting our knees fall to one side at a time. Just loosen up our low back. Get some juices flowing. Nothing super crazy here. Go along with your right leg. Interlace your hands, wrap them around your left shin. And then pull that left shin into your arm. It's a little half wind relieving pose right here. And we want to use our upper body strength. So really pull yourself in. And for me, I kind of pull in and then out a little bit. That's just kind of how my hips are, um, hips are built. So it allows me to get a little bit of stretch, a little bit more stretch in than out. That might help you as well. Just kind of feel around. We're gonna send this left knee over to the right side, so we're gonna take a little rotation here. Arms can be out to a T, or you can bend them like a goalpost. And then look over your left shoulder if that feels okay on your neck. Get a little cervical rotation in there. I'm breathing. As always, a reminder as we're making our way through, we want our breathing to match the cadence of the exercise, so we're stretching. Nice, slow, rhythmic breath. When we're sprinting or we're working out like that, obviously we're going to be breathing a lot harder. So the cadence of your breath should match the demands of the exercise. Go along with your left leg and release your hands around your right shin. Pull that right shin in and maybe out. That allows you to get a little bit deeper into the stretch. Working on your breath. I'm kind of feeling into the stretch. Go ahead and send this right knee over to the left side. Same thing, arms out to a T or goal post and look over your right shoulder if that feels okay. And as things go through your mind, as thoughts kind of appear and disappear, wherever thoughts come from, just let them pass. Unnoticed or unag unacknowledged, no judgment, and just get back to finding your breath. So it's just practice. It's thoughts are going to 
your eyes. When you remember, I'll help remind you. Just come back to your breath. Go ahead and go, oops, go long with both legs. Mm -hmm. And then let's go ahead and come up to a seated position. We're going to go out wide with the seated position. So think about your legs being in a V here. Both arms up overhead. Let's go ahead and frame your left foot. We're going to go ahead and fold over that left side. So we're reaching for our toes on our left side. Both sit bones rooted down so your glutes are kind of posted up. They should be in contact. Try to fight that tendency for our right hip to rise a little bit. We're using our breath here. So every exhale on your own, I'm not going to cue you guys for this stretch, but every exhale on your own, you're just trying to get that little millimeter, that little inch more stretch. Inhale, both hands up overhead, frame your right foot, and then we'll fold over that right side. The same thing here, we want to be rooted down through our hips, rooted down through our glutes. Breathe. This is definitely a stress, stressful stretch for me, especially early in the morning. It's important just to breathe. Breathe into that tension, calm under pressure, that's something that I've that's something that yoga has helped teach me. Go ahead and reset, both arms up overhead. And then we'll just go ahead and take a forward fold, both hands planted on the ground. And then depending on your level of mobility, crawl your fingers forward. This is pretty much all I got, so. Uh, yeah, crawl your fingers forward as, as tall as you can. As long as you can. Inhale, we'll come up nice and tall. And then go ahead and come to all fours. So we'll be on hands and knees right here. First things first, I got you, Kalesa. Let's hit a little juice it up. So go ahead. Hip rotations, hip circles, get it going. Big, small, maybe a little mixture of both, whatever's calling to you today. Getting that hip joint going. And make sure to go the opposite direction of your rotation. So, and no judgment here. Just freeform movements. Give your body what it needs. Three, two, one. Go ahead and come back to all fours. Hands underneath your shoulders. Knees underneath your hips. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a frog. So I'm gonna turn sideways on my mat. Maybe you want to do the same. Because we're gonna cut just the inside of our thighs here. So knees are gonna come out wide, feet are gonna stay together. The farther your knees are, the more you're gonna feel this stretch. So kind of play around with that. First, what we're gonna do, find that position with your knees and then come down to your forearms. And then we'll just take some slow, kind of like call these like frog rockers. <laughs> and just slowly go forward and backwards, kind of like a juice it up but a different hip position. So it's kind of feeling into your hips right here as well. And then play around with your knee position. Maybe you went out too wide, you need to come back in a little bit. You're just too overzealous. But if you can, try to slowly inch those knees apart as your hips kind of loose into the stretch. We're breathing smooth and steady here. Come back up to your palms and then Close your knees up like a book. Come back to all fours. Send your knees back long and then come down to the ground. All right, so we're gonna hit like a baby cobra. I'm not even exactly sure what this is called, but your hands are gonna be planted right in line with your armpits. So you want your, your elbows kind of tucked. We're gonna eventually transition to a locust pose. So think about your elbows right here, almost like, like grasshopper legs. So they wanna be tucked and your elbows are kind of lifted up. So we're not going to press into our hands. I want you to be weightless in your palms. And we're just going to slowly peel our heart up off the ground. Press your feet into the ground. Press your hips into the ground. And we're just going to hold right here. So there should be no pressure on your palms. You should be able to lift your palms from the ground. And exhale. Go ahead and drop your left ear to the ground. Palms are 
light as a feather. Press your pelvis into the ground. Baby lift of your heart right here. We're trying to peel our heart off the ground. And breathe. Exhale, reset. We're right ear to the ground. Alrighty. So let's go ahead. We're going to go palms. Our arms are going to be long. Palms are going to face the ground right here. So you can't really see, but my palms are on the ground. We're going to go for a locust. So we're going to lift our feet up off the ground, and we're going to lift our chest like we just did. Great. I'm going to pose here for strengthening the entire backside. So palms face the ground. Send your feet up into the air, mainly by squeezing your glutes. That's how we want to lift. And then we're just going to peel our heart up off the ground. Palms are lifted. Shoulders down and back. Chin is tucked. Broad with your collarbones here. So broaden out your collarbones, broaden out your chest, and hold. Inhale. Exhale, reset. Drop your left ear to the ground. Relax. Let's hit that locust one more time. So palms are lifted, chin is tucked. Squeezing our glutes to lift our feet up off the ground. Shoulders down and back, broad collarbone here. Hold your locus. So chest is lifted, feet are lifted. We're strengthening the whole back side right now. Inhale. Exhale, right ear drops to the ground, let it all go. Alrighty guys, we're gonna try this, this, uh, this uh, what was it, a bow pose. So work with me here. What you're gonna do is reach to grab your ankles on both your feet. Uh, your feet knees are together and we're gonna do a very similar thing where we peel our heart up off the ground and we're trying to lift our thighs up off the ground too so you really want to kick your hands excuse me kick your feet into your hands right here so let's hit our bow pose and just hold it kick your feet into your hands peeling your heart up off the ground chin is tucked broad collarbone here as well hold three two one, go ahead and release. Don't slingshot your legs. Nice. Go ahead and um, hands should be at the armpit. Press up. Let's hit our cobra pose. Look up if it feels okay on your neck. And then send your hips back. Shift it back to a little child's pose action. So depending on what stretch you're looking for, knees can either be together or apart. Typically apart, a little bit easier on the hips. Feet should be together. Crawl your fingers forward as tall as you can, so really reaching forward, and also actively sinking your hips backwards. So a nice little pull in the lats right here, breathe. Come back up to all fours, tuck your toes for a plank position, and we're going to shift our hips up for our down dog. So hips high, heels low, pedal out your dog, give your calves a little stretch here as we normally do. Feel into your calves, feel into your hamstrings, maybe even a little feet stretch action. Mm -hmm. Next, slowly tippy toe to meet our hands in a forward fold. Once we're here, head's hanging heavy, bend your knees as much as you need to right here, and release your hands at your elbows. A little rag doll pose, nod your head yes. Shake it out no. Let's go ahead and inhale. We're going to slowly unwind one vertebrae at a time. Both hands up overhead. And we drop it to our center. Let's hit our mountain pose. So our active stand. Feet are about shoulder width apart. Palms are going to face away. They're at your side. Shoulders down and back. Active through our legs. Big toe. Pinky toe. Heel. Glued down. Spread the floor out. Kneecaps should rise because our legs are active. And we're feeling rooted down, we're feeling strong. We're going to transition in to a chair pose. So we're going to sink down, bending at the knees, shooting our hips back. Our hands are going to be up overhead. So this is the chair. We've done it a couple times, um, but not enough. Both hands up overhead, sink in, down, bend at the knees, shooting that hips back. Biceps should be in line with the ears right here. We're feeling strong through our legs, just like we were for our mountain pose. Oh. Come up to stand, reset in the chair. Arms out to a T, soft bend in the knees. Push your booty back, let's forward fold. 
Plant your hands and walk your feet back to our plank position. Slowly lower to the ground. Chaturanga, press up. Cobra, tuck your toes, hips up high, downward facing dog. Tip your toe to meet your hands back in our forward fold. Inhale, both arms up overhead. Hands to heart center. And we reset, nice. Let's go ahead and go feet together here. We're gonna hit our chair pose slightly different. We're gonna pull kind of everything into the midline. So squeezing our legs together right here. Biceps up over, or excuse me, arms up overhead, biceps at the ears. Then sink it down, squeezing your knees, squeezing your thighs together right here, chair pose. Hold it. For me, it's a great, ex great stretch for, my, or a great pose for my ankle mobility. Gonna sink it down just a little bit more. Inhale, go ahead and hand a reset. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and do a little hamstring stretch here. So we're gonna kick our left foot forward, toes up, booty back, and then full surrender. So it should feel a nice stretch in this left hamstring. We do the stretch all the time, so, so you guys are regulars, you know what's going on here. I'm not going to cue you into it, but every exhale we're trying to get a little bit deeper into the stretches. I don't want to cue you on it today because I want it to be something that you guys kind of do habitually or do kind of naturally. Inhale, come up, and then reset. Right foot forward, toes up, soften our knees, and then we'll send our hips back, fold over. Nice little stretch in our right hamstring here. Using our breath, every exhale, a little bit deeper into the fold. Inhale, let's go ahead and come up. Grab your left foot, heel comes to your booty. Let's do a little standing, step back, whoa. A little standing quad stretch. Try to have your knees stay together. Really squeeze your butt forward, and you'll feel the stretch a lot more. Right arm goes up overhead. We're gonna hit a little standing bow here, so what we did on the ground. Go ahead and slowly tilt forward, really reaching your fingertips towards whatever wall is in front of you. Kick your foot into your hand. Look up and you'll feel a small little back bend. And breathe. Slowly reverse your steps. We'll tilt back to our standing position. Right arm will fall to our side, and don't slingshot your legs, slowly let it fall to the ground. This is what I mean by slingshot. We just don't want to do that control. Nice. Go ahead and grab your right foot. Standing quad stretch to begin. Booty is squeezed, knees together. We're still standing nice and tall, so rooted down through our left foot. Big toe, pinky toe, heel, grip in the ground. Left arm up overhead, bicep at the ear. We're slowly going to tilt forward. The left fingertip towards the wall. Once you have your balance, kick your foot into your hand. Look up, small back bend. Hold and breathe. Slowly reverse your steps. Hand to the side. Slowly lower our foot back to the ground. Arms out to a T, soft foot of the knees, booty back, forward fold. Plant your hands to the top of your mat, walk your feet back, plank position, slowly lower down to the ground. Got it wrong. We'll press up, look up, that feels okay, shoulders are down and back. Hands planted, sink your hips back. Let's hit our child's pose here, y'all. Crawl your fingers tall, sink your hips back. Go up to all fours. And then we'll go ahead and come to a comfortable seated position. So cross legged, butterfly, whatever. Alrighty guys, that's gonna be the morning mobility for this beautiful Monday, May 18th. Thank you guys for coming in per usual. I'm going to leave you guys with one of the things that yoga has helped me is what I was talking about earlier is being calm under pressure 
is kind of take, being able to expand that moment between a stimulus and a response. So a lot of times our actions are just reactions. But yoga allows you to kind of elongate that space and decide a better course of action. So we're cultivating that space between stimulus and action. And remember, we're in charge of our attitude, we're in charge of our reaction, always. Here's a quote for um, the day. This is from a guy named Viktor Frankl. He's a psychologist that was in um, a concentration camp. So kind of intense. Not really great to see. Here it is. We who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given circumstance and to choose one's own way. Boom. I always have a choice. Alrighty, guys. Um, I'll see you up on in here Wednesday and Friday. We're still getting after it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Tell your friends. All that kind of good stuff. And I'll see you Wednesday.